All right, everyone. So uh, it finally happened. Um, about in March, around my birthday, I ordered um, my first professional drum kit, and it finally came yesterday on Fourth of July, which was cool. Um, it's my brand new DW Collector Series drum kit. Um, I'll give you a little background on why I chose uh, DW. Um, and why this is just such a big deal for me. Um, so about 1998, when I was about 10 years old, I remember uh, getting um, my dad and mom getting me and my brother Kiss Psycho Circus um, for Christmas, I believe. I think it was Christmas, maybe birthday. And um, yeah, it was probably birthday. Um, we got like uh, the magazines and stuff that uh, Kiss was putting out. Uh, to, to promote it and all that and there was a big ass poster in the magazine and all these pictures of Peter Chris with his new DW kit that was it was like some crazy zebra sparkle stripe kind of thing but they look so cool and ever since then I've always like loved DW drums I saw Kiss in 2000 on the first Farewell Tour and Peter Chris was using the DWs and they sounded awesome. And around that same time, I was getting very, very big into Motley Crue. And to this day, Tommy Lee is still one of my all time favorite drummers. And as everybody knows, he was one of the first really, really big DW guys. And I remember growing up seeing the pictures of his drum kits from Generation Swine and Greatest Hits Tour, where he had kind of a bottom set with a 26 inch bass drum. And he also had a 32 inch. He put it off to the side at that time, and that was there was a disco ball one he had, and the DWs did, they just sounded amazing. And I vaguely remember I think it, they were on Jay Leno in the late '90s, and he was playing that kit, and it was just so awesome looking and sounding. So that was the first of the DW stuff that I really started getting into, and I already had loved their pedals. My dad used uh, the original DW 5000s and had one of the first double pedals of uh, DW. So I was really already into all the DW stuff. I got a DW hi-hat stand for Christmas one year when I was 13 or 14. And it's the same one I still use today, the DW 5000. Um, and they just never needed another one. Um, so yeah, over the years, seeing a lot of my favorite bands live. So Motley Crue in 2005, and he had the big um, DW kit with the red uh, fur on it. And he had a 2632, like what I have now. That I use and um, that was probably the best drum set I ever heard live. I also a couple years ago saw Christoph Schneider play with Rammstein and he had a DW Jazz Series kit in black matte with uh, chrome hardware and it just looked and sounded amazing. Probably the second best kit I ever heard. Also there's Glenn Sobel. I've seen him live maybe too many times that I can't even remember and his DWs always sound fucking awesome. So I've had a big history of seeing and hearing and I actually got to play a set of DWs when I got to do uh, the Kiss Cruise drum off a year or so ago. Um, and I believe it might have been one of Brent Fitz's drum kits. And that sounded awesome, played awesome. And I just always got to kind of play around with DW. And then finally, when I came timed, like, I really need to upgrade my kit because the one I've been using is a Taiwanese made, just Ludwig Accent series that I just kind of customized, put fake leather on it. and tried to make it look like the old 70s uh, Black Panther drums of Ludwig. And they looked cool. They weren't the best sounding. The kick that was the, the, the best sounding thing on, on that whole set, the 26 inch. And uh, But when it came time to, to be like, I need to get a pro kit, I was you know, going back and forth. I've always used Ludwig since I was a little kid, um, mainly the lower grade lines like Accent and Rocker series and stuff. But I just kept coming back to DW because I've just, um, from talking to other pro drummers and sound guys and stuff, it's just DW seemed to be the way to go. It was made in the USA, uh, now owned by Roland, which is fine with me. Um, and I was like, I'm going to do it. I love the look, the round lugs, like the Camco styles from the 70s. They just look fantastic. Um, I feel like they fit my uh, personality and the image I'm trying to project with my look. And then the sound of the drums, they're, they're kind of the standard of rock and roll right now. Actually, for the past maybe 30, 
35 years. Almost every other hard rock album, it's like a DW kit was in there being recorded. And uh, so I decided to make the jump. So for around my birthday, I went to Guitar Center, talked to my man, uh, Caleb Fuller, who works there, um, one of my good friends, and uh, we put in the quote, got it back. It was, it was high, of course, but I, I saved up some money to put down on it, and I've been paying on it, and I'll have it done, being paid off soon. And I worked hard for this kit. I, I wanna say, I, since I was 10, and you know, it was like 25 years-ish, I've been wanting to get a pro kit, and I finally got one, a little you know, later than sooner, but I uh, made the jump, and I've, I have, I will admit, I have already looked at them. When we were at Guitar Center picking them up, me and Caleb wanted to double check everything, make sure, sure it's all there, and it is, and you guys are gonna freak out when you see this, I, I, I think, because everything about it is me. And DW, I feel like outdid themselves. I've seen DWs in person, and to me, me personally, <laughs> this is one of the coolest DW kits. So without further ado, I'm gonna start unboxing these damn things. So just let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. All right. <clears throat> so let me get the angle maybe a little better. So yeah, I got the DW boxes. There's a 26-inch. That'll be a eight. That's the 16, 18, 14, and the snare. So uh, let's start going through these. <clears throat> I'm gonna get out my DW drum throne that my wife got me for my birthday a long time ago. I think we'll start with the snare. All right, I'll show it to y'all, and then uh, I'll explain it to you. Box in the box. So, here it is, DW Collectors 14 by 6 and a half cast aluminum, 3 millimeter aluminum snare drum, 10 lugs. This thing is heavy, about 20, 21 some odd pounds with a wrinkle finish. And uh, this is my dream snare. <laughs> Um, I, I had over the years gone back and forth of do I want the cast aluminum or the, the cast bronze. A lot of drummers right now for the past 10 years have been big into the bronze. But I went with the cast aluminum because I feel like 10 years ago my style was maybe a little different. I was a little more straightforward. I didn't do as many ghost notes or anything. And I feel like the bronze as far as hard rock um, is more of a straightforward snare. Um, the sensitivity is there, but it doesn't, it's such a loud, it's probably one of the loudest snares. I think most bronze snares are probably the loudest next to brass. Um, and I wanted something with a little more delicacy in it, kind of a, um, a cross between a superphonic and a bronze. And I feel like this is what I'm getting out of this. You know, kind of a John Bonham on steroids, heavier, uh, more oomph to it not as uh, light so I am very very excited for this to get a good look at the that's just a sick sick ass snare it's thick and it's just I can't wait to uh, I'm gonna rehead it I gotta rehead it because I'll bust through this and I got a 42 strand wire I'm gonna put on it just for more uh, crisp crispness but Sounds like it's gonna have a nice ring. It's got the cool DW throw off, and then I can put, position the, the snare wires how I want them. So a lot of ability to dial it in exactly how I want it. And I'm just gonna put it over here on my DW stand, snare stand that I bought uh, a month or so ago. Yeah. 
All right, so we'll get the snare, and we'll start with the 14-inch floor tom. People use a uh, um, you know, ride tom that's just a standard rack tom with a mount or on a snare stand, but I've been using floor toms as my ride toms for since about 2005, six ish. I didn't know other drummers did it at the time, but I think I'm one of the few that are still doing it. But so I've got the floor tom laid. <clears throat> Here's the first floor tom. It's a 14 by 12, 12 uh, depth, 14. Um, I wanted that because most of the, I've been using 14 by 14, but I wanted just a little more of a tom sound rather than a floor tom sound. Get rid of a lot of the like hooting and stuff. Uh, this already sounds like it's going to tune up real well. I'm going to replace all the, the Tom's heads with black dots to really get that old school oomph and tubbiness out of these and quickness. Um, but yeah, I got the Darth Vader hard black satin lacquer. Uh, and it's cool because it even says it on the boxes, Darth Vader. Chrome hardware because for me, I just believe black with chrome is just the look of rock and roll. Uh, the trend right now has been getting the black nickel hardware with like flat blacks and matte blacks. The, I think the black satin, I chose that for one, it's called Darth Vader, so I'm a big Star Wars guy. But two, um, it, it'll lighten up, like you can see the, the light shines on it, but it just still looks black. Sometimes they kind of turn out a little on stage or in a drum room or record, it looks like uh, it turns gray almost or it starts reflecting colors too much and I wanted something that just always looks black and the chrome hardware just keeps the size and the look that it's there it doesn't just turn into a big blur like a lot of black hardware tends to do so yeah 14 by 12 all the shells are um, collector series pure Michigan maple with the re-rings and the inside of this just looks fantastic. It's just, I don't normally, honestly, like the look of inside the drums a lot of times. But um, you can't not like the look of that. It just, it's an incredible build. And this color is just, it's Darth Vader black. <laughs> so there's the uh, 14 by 12 floor tom that's going to go in the very front of the drum. <clears throat> the 16-inch floor tom. Alright, here we got the floor tom laid. Alright. Yeah, this is the uh, this is just a, a little beast right here. The uh, 16 inch floor tom, black and chrome. And the cool thing that DW did for this that I didn't know they did until like they redid their website and put the sizes that they do is normally people will do a 16 by 16, you know, classic John Bonham sizes um, or 14 by 16, a little shallower, a little quicker. It was cool because I was able to get a 15 by 16 inch. So it's a 15 inch depth, uh, kind of right there in the middle. I sit low so I don't, the 16 by 16s kind of get a little too low in there and the sound travels up and down. But I was afraid for the 14 uh, depth, it'd just be too quick and, and going around the toms would just feel weird because I still want that kind of uh, fluffiness low end um, when I'm riding on that floor tom. So having a 15 by 16, I feel like it's going to be right where I want it. Um, and so I'm really, really stoked to hear this one. 
definitely and again you know Darth Vader black chrome that wood in there it's gonna look awesome with the black dots and at some point I'll replace the rezzo heads with black dots too I just like the way that sounds and how that looks I know a lot of drummers in the 80s would do black dots on the top and the bottom and I, I kind of like just matching on a lot of that stuff Up the big board, Tom. The big old 18 by 16, the traditional big rock floor tom. Uh, super stoked to hear this too because I was never happy with my 18 inch Ludwig floor tom. I just never could get it to sound very good. So, this one, I think, with the re reams and the black dot on here. Already like that, it sounds way better than my 18 Ludwig, the cheap one. And I uh, can't wait to put a black dot on here and just really hear some really good controlled low end. And I do have to say, just looking at the finishes on these is just, it's like not gonna smudge or nothing. Like fingerprints just gonna disappear. <laughs> but uh, even just holding this. Hearing the uh, low end resonance is just crazy. All right, now I gotta make room for the piece of the resistance, if you wanna call it. <laughs> Let me get these boxes out of the way. Did not think that through with the boxes. This is the, the thing I really wanted to see out of everything. I've been using big bass drums since I was a kid. Um, my dad used two 28 inch bass drums. I was using a, a single 28 inch bass drum for the longest time as a teenager. When I was younger, I would use just a 22, 24. But the taller I got, the more I was like, I gotta have a big bass drum. And being a big Tommy Lee fan and John Bonham fan, I had to. And this, I about, this is what started to make me tear up a little bit in Guitar Center. Here. 16 by 26 inch maple bass drum. Darth Vader matte black chrome hardware with blood red satin bass drum hoops. I am, I was beyond stoked to see these hoops. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but you know, I got close to this color when I painted my, my Ludwigs, but this just is even more of what I wanted. I wanted something that was going to look big, evil. Um, here, let me point that camera down. I wanted something that was big and evil looking and being a big Star Wars fan, black and chrome, like, you know, Darth Vader and the red lightsaber look. But my dad, back in the day, he had a, a, a Slingerland drum kit. He painted kind of a satin black, and he had, like, cool red hoops like this. And I always just thought, that's, like, my look. That's the look of rock and roll again, black and red. And this is blood red, just it's not too bright not too dark it's not candy apple look, doesn't look like a like a piece of candy um, and I'm 
just beyond stoked for all of this kit. And uh, this has been, like I said, 20, 20 some odd years. I've been wanting a new kit and I finally have my DWs that I've dreamed of for years. And I put a lot of thought into this. I've been testing out different sizes and configurations for, for a couple decades now since I was a kid. And just being able to get uh, something that's mine, that's my color, my sizes, my personality. Uh, all my friends know I do, I dress black all the time, not because I think it looks goth or cool, just because it's easy. <laughs> Uh, my drum room, red and black. Uh, my car is red and black, pretty much. Um, and um, the big sizes just, I think, go along with the larger than life thing that I've wanted to project since I was a kid, seeing bands like Kiss and Motley Crue and Alice Cooper. And uh, this is a kit I feel like you could see on stage with Alice Cooper or something. And uh, I will be pairing my 32 inch Ludwig marching bass drum with this. Um, I'm not giving that up. I, the 32 inch bass drum is just part of my playing now. I can't, it feels weird without it. <laughs> and it's got the red hoops and the, the black should match decent enough until I can um, find something closer to this color to wrap it in. But I'm sure it'll work out fine. It's gonna look crazy wicked side by side. I'll definitely have to get some new bass drum heads at some point. The, the, one that came with it. That should be good <laughs> for now. I'm gonna get a controlled sound Power Stroke 3 at some point for it. And uh, it come, this came with uh, the uh, DW muffling pillows, but I'm not gonna use those. I don't like using muffling. I like the big open sound. I hit hard enough and uh, the way I tune, I feel like it controls it enough. Um, the recordings I've been posting with my Ludwigs, uh, there's no muffling whatsoever in that. It's just a power stroke on the front and back, which I'll probably eventually replace this head with a power stroke um, front head. Um, I'll probably do the black suede to keep with the matte look, and that, that way it's not glistening off of everything. Um, but yeah, I'll, this is the, my dream kit that I've wanted for decades. And I finally got it, and I busted my ass for it. And I know these days it's it's easy to see kids and stuff with like crazy drum kits that are very expensive, and you question like, how did they get that? And some of the drum companies seem to be pretty embraceive of that, I guess. But I can always say I bought this. This is my kit. I didn't get any help from the companies and or or managers or endorsers or social media people to get this kit. It was me ordering it. My friend Caleb, shout out to him at Guitar Center for really helping me through this process. Um, shout out to uh, Glenn, the head of the Guitar Center drum department and all the Guitar Centers. He got the ball rolling with DW to, to get the purchase made and I want to shout out DW themselves for just the, the, this quality of work is is just bar none. There's a reason why they're considered the drummer's choice. And I haven't even played these yet. I've only tapped them and I I don't even have to like second guess that these are gonna sound like the best drums I ever heard. They're the exact sizes I want. I've, like I said, I've done a lot of research. I chose Collector's Maple um, because it's just a definitive rock and roll shell. Um, it's got the re-rings, gives it a little more control and, and, and and reels it in just like a vintage drum, but still has the big powerful openness. And so many of the recordings that you hear of DW were collectors' maples. It was these type of shells. Um, DW's just crazy with their VLT, low timbers, and nine plies, all these different plies, different maples and cherries and gums and, and stuff like that. But when it comes down to rock and roll, you can't beat the sound of just this thick, Michigan maple, all American maple, um, an American, everything's American on this, as far as I know, and and uh, even with Roland buying out DW, 
it's still it's an ecstatic thing because now DW can go everywhere and, and, and can really up their game because I think before that they weren't even doing 15 by 16 floor toms. They weren't really customizing uh, the cuts and depths too too far. So Roland clearly helped them really get the, the, the things they want to really give you a custom kit. They were probably some of the first custom drum companies next to just only giving big artists what they wanted and uh, for other companies. Um, but, you know, like, I, I, I am just so ecstatic. I've been staring. I'm staring at these as I'm talking to you because <laughs> I'm that ecstatic. Um, I will work on getting new heads on these tonight and, and getting the drum kit put back together and, and doing some sound samples hopefully tomorrow to post. And I really can't wait myself to hear these and for all of you to hear these and see, see this whole kit put together in all its glory. And uh, this is only like, this is the main aspect of the kit is these drums. I'm, I'm slowly saving up for, to, to transfer all my hardware into DW probably just get the, the, the standard 3000s, nothing nothing fancy. I use all straight fans. I don't need the expensive stuff. I hope someday to get a machine direct drive double pedal. Uh, that'll be a dream. Those, I bet those sound you know, or feel incredible. That That's a goal, hopefully, in, at the end of the year, next year, to save up for that. Um, but yeah, everything about this kit is what I want. It's going to go awesome. I already use Roland drum pads. I use Latin percussion cowbells. Um, so I already use mostly all the stuff that DW's umbrella is. So hint, 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 DW. Um, but yeah, these paired with, with my PreSonus microphones, my Zoom uh, digital recorder. I can't wait for all of you to hear that. and. Next week, I'm going to try to work on putting out a, a, my first drum cover with these drums and just keep an eye out on the progress of just continuing to, of me continuing to, to, to really get this kit um, exactly how I want it to be the dream kit that I've been wanting for years. And uh, it's a very, very uh, core memory now for me. And I want to thank everybody again. I want to thank my wife for just all the support. And um, fun fact, she's the one that actually bought the snare drum for me for my birthday. Um, this is her uh, birthday present to me. And uh, I'm just, I just can't wait to, to play all of this. So um, stay tuned. Keep, uh, just keep believing in the things you want to believe in. And if you work hard, you'll you'll have the things you want, hopefully. And I want everybody's dreams to come true. I want everybody to have fun, and this is fun for me. And I hope you guys all have fun watching me um, um, enjoy all of this. <laughs> um, so, peace out, and just keep keep rocking. <laughs>